All right, greetings. How are you doing today? All right, we got a variable speed center that's all over the place. You've seen this before. And it's a, uh, well, it's in a manual transmission. It doesn't cause a lot of problems, but when it's in an automatic from this generation, it, uh, it, you'll get like a surge and a buck like that, you know? So that's how you can almost diagnose that that's the issue. And mostly you'll have a check engine light I think it's going to be P500. <laughs> All right, either way, right? You might, you might not get it. So what we have is a variable speed sensor. This is the part that connects to the harness. And uh, these, get you a little bit of a light here. Okay, so in here, right, we have this. If you look closely, you can see it. Uh, it has a like a little barrel on it. It's about 15.5 centimeters long, and I cannot find them anywhere. If you can find them, let me know. Right. So the curved part here, right, slides into into like this. Still we'll check that. Yeah, it slides into some uh, grooves. So it's the back of the terminal. Let's see, so it goes like here. And you can listen, listen closely, you can hear it click. See, so now I'll pull on it, it's, it's stuck, right? Now how do you get it out? Well, that's easy. So. What you do is get yourself a really small screwdriver like this, flathead. Okay. Use them for computer repair, right? And there is a plastic tab right here. Right? You just want to push it down because a tab holds it. In place. I hope you can see. Let's see. Take your flat screwdriver, push it in, in and up, like that, because it locks, it holds it on. That's what it's sliding into. Right. So once you're pushed underneath it, you should be able to like kind of push. Well, actually, you should be able to push it right out. So push down. All right and up like that so lift up push in and lift up like that and then this will get loose you should be able to pull it right out see like that okay so here's a con this is what's happening right this little rubber gasket there I think it just leaks over time, you know? So what we have to do is, I'm gonna put this back in, right? We gotta, gotta help it out a little. Yeah, that's what we gotta do. We have to help this thing out a little. Okay, so there we go. We're in, we're back, right? All right, so it leaks. I, 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 we got to figure out a way to like keep the water from settling because this sits down like this into the transmission on top of the variable speed sensor. We have to find a way to protect it, so I'll bring it right back. So that's your variable speed sensor. It goes down into the transmission like this. I mean, yeah. And over time, liquid just kinds of like rain, moisture just kind of builds up and falls inside of there. All right. So what we want to do is figure out a way. See right in here. See that? That's like a little chamber. It just catches all this liquid. 
and it corrodes that and this. Right? And I got these parts in my junkyard, so you can also get them online. They're very common. It's a common failure. Right? And uh, there's a seal that goes around this, but we need to augment this capacity. Right? So how are we going to do this? I think Let's see. Slide that down. Okay, so that's locked into there. So the only way moisture can really get in is from back here. You know? If these are like shot. So we gotta put something back here to kinda help out. Help this out a little bit. Yeah, I think that's what we gotta do. Alright, I think I think rubber cement might be a good idea. A little rubber cement back there, just to like help seal that out. Yeah, let's do it. So I know how easily this is going to be done, because you know, Ugh, stuff is uh, a little tricky. So my idea is, I can get a, I can pour some out on something. Right? Anyway, any lovely scrap pieces of wood. Okay. All right, well we can go like this. See what I'm doing? I'm just kind of pouring a little rubber cement in behind those so that way as it dries what happens is uh let me get some on this side should be able to get a create a nice little seal All right. I just want to a little seal. Alright, let's take a look at that. Yeah, I think that'll work, right? So get ourselves a nice little seal around that. And uh, there should be no water coming out of this coming into it. So what did we do? We just patched back there behind us. Behind these, we just patched the hole, the gap. The gap is already, it's already set, but whatever. See, this has a, hmm, interesting. That has a ring, an O-ring. A little gasket. Maybe that's the better one to use. Hmm. Something's different about this one here. See it? Oops, I don't want to spill that. I'm <laughs> sorry. Interesting. Is this? I was not expecting that. This has a rubber. What is that? Oh, I see. Well, looky here. Well, this one's missing that. No, it's got a whole different design. Hmm. <laughs> well, well, well. So we have choices here. Now we'll do. We'll keep this one. Keep, this is called a pigtail, by the way. And keep this pigtail here. And uh, we'll save it for when this one fails. Hopefully not. Like it? Good. Alright, for those of you who don't know, the uh, Variable speed sensors right down here. I'm just moving this out of the way. So 
we can get a little bit more room visually. Okay, so right here, I pulled it off for you already. See that? Hey right there. Oh, scoop that so we can't pull it away. Okay, so right here is the variable speed sensor. And this plug here is what we are trying to resolve. If you look closely, you can see it's the middle one, the middle pin's uh, oxidized. So I think that's the problem with the surge. Okay, and uh, let's, let's just double check the wires, make sure they all, they're the same. So we have a black, this middle one is yellow and black. Yep, that's just like the other one. And the outside one's blue and white. Okay, so we're not gonna have any issues with this lining this up there. The wires match. They're the same as it. All right, that's a less vertigo-like experience possibly. But you see right here, see that center pin, it's uh, corroded. Right? Yeah, so that's a instant giveaway. Well, I'm getting some intermittent, um, uh, what you call it, uh, connection. Now here's the thing, the middle pin here, right, pin number two is going to be the power. And the black pin is going to be the ground, which is this all the way out here on this side. And this third pin here is going to give me a voltage back to the, the electronic control module. That's going to... That's how he knows how fast it's gone. So we gotta do a couple things. We gotta get that variable speed sensor out of there and make sure that, that fits before we go cutting stuff. Okay, so right here is the variable speed sensor. And uh, I hope you can see it's a little dark, but this is an aftermarket one. I put, I threw parts at this before I knew how to solve it. So I apologize. This is gonna be a 10 millimeter that we use to uh, pull it off. The uh, original manufactured one is a uh, 12 millimeter um, bolt that's here. So I, at least I think, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I could be wrong. Actually, I think I absolutely am wrong. You know why I know? Because the bolt is still the same bolt. So we just need to see I didn't replace the bolt, I replaced this the last time. I need to see if uh, the other variable speed sensor will actually work. Alright, so that's that. Now, hmm. before you pull it off, you definitely should probably clean around this area. Yeah, I'll look. Okay, so. We absolutely want to clean that before we pull it out because we don't want any particulates to fall down into the transmission. Should have pulled this right out. There you go. So that's our baby. Hmm, the pins look pretty good actually. Makes me wonder if uh, this is actually still good. It's just a connection on the, um, whatever. We'll switch and try it. All right. Wipe this stuff off. I'm trying to get anything into the uh, transmission. All right, good. Okay, so here's our new friend. See if a bolt fit in there. Fits a little loose. I don't know. Is it the same? Definitely not the same. It's close. Oops. Can you see? It's close. The, the length and the length is the same. Oh right, yeah. So it should work. Okay. That one's aftermarket. I did mention that, right? So we're gonna pull this pigtail off. 
take this here, drop it into here. Kind of have to turn it until it lines up. Will that work? No, it doesn't line up. That's interesting. So that's not going to work for this car. Not a problem, not a problem. Looks like they made this a little, a little different. No, they didn't. I'm not sure what I'm sure what I'm seeing here. Okay. So that's what we're looking at. Right? They look like they should work. Yeah. There you go. Just keep turning and turning, you'll feel it. It'll slide. The gears will mesh. That's what'll happen. Okay. Gears mesh up. Oh, fuck. You know it won't work because uh, this is longer. Interesting. So this here is longer. See that? Well, I'll be. Sorry. I'll be. That is a little longer. So we're gonna have to use this one. Let's clean this one up. And uh, get some terminal cleaner and we'll go from there. All right, we're gonna use uh, two things. We're gonna use uh, battery cleaner first. And then we're gonna use this at the very end. D-Series Deoxit D5. It improves electronic connection, delete, dissolves corrosion, improves connection, protects surfaces. This is what we're going to use last. Alright, so we got to get this uh, peeled back a little. So to do that, you take a razor blade and carefully cut the uh, harness cover. There we go. And uh, those are our wires. Black on the left side, middle is yellow. Yellow and black. And our right side is blue and white. Let's just double check that with the other one we're going to replace it with. Which is somewhere here. Yep, right where it belongs. Okay. Here we go. Black on the left, blue and white on the outside, yellow and black in the middle. Alright, good. That's it. We're doing it. You ready? Alright, it's not going back. Cutting this harness. It sucks. I didn't want to do it, but that's what we're doing. Here we go. Done. Now we're having none but commitment. So if you have commitment issues, it's not the place to have it. All right, so you can see that uh, this is a finished job right here. And uh, when you do this, you want to get a good wicking. See, the uh, solder goes all the way through both wires. I'm going to show you how to do this off all the car later. But you get the idea. You want to get a nice finish like that. Now, most important, put a rag down, you know? Because uh, solder drops everywhere and it'll, it'll melt stuff. Okay, so you just want to 
don't break anything. I already broke something. So anyway, uh, bef before you uh, solder it on, you see these. Sh um, these are going to be the uh, what we're going to use to like uh, heat shrink. This is our heat shrink. So you got to put those on first, and then you uh, slide them up after you uh, solder the wires together. Get the water right, or you'll just okay. And then there's a bigger cover that goes around this. Uh, a bigger wire. I don't have it right now, so I mean not wire. I meant um, cover from the manufacturer. I'm going to uh, I'm going to cut it, slide it on, or I'm going to cut heat shrink and put it on, and cut heat shrink and put heat shrink around bigger heat shrink around all three wires. So uh, that's the end. That'll be the end result. All right, there you go. So this is the. Uh, Finished product. This is the finished product right here. You can see they're all heat shrinked together there. So in a perfect world, I would just depin this and slide on the sleeve. But I uh, remember I glued, kind of glued the back down because I wanted to like minimize water getting in there. So that's going to be a little bit of an issue if we're trying to do that. So. Have to try another, go another route. But so that's the original sheath that was around the uh, wire harness to the uh, speed vehicle speed sensor, and uh, you can see right here I already started to cut it. So what I'm going to do I'm going to cut this all the way down, and then I'm going to wrap it around the harness, and then I'm going to take a. I'm going to do the same thing with some uh, shrink tubing. I'm going to wrap it around. I'm going to cut the shrink tubing, uh, crazy glue it back together, and then wrap wrap it around this. And that's that's how we're going to do that. So I want to show you. Uh, let's see if it's a little hard to see or not. But uh, do you see that in the middle pin? How uh, it's like greenish you see that at all yeah there you go so that's the pin that pin right there was corroded and because of that corrosion it absolutely was uh, creating an intermittent speed sensor so that's the uh, that's the one right there so I think what happened that back there didn't it stopped sealing. So you can get a better focus. There you go. It stopped the middle pin right here. Just totally stopped uh it, the the seal was compromised. It just started leaking, you know. Which is why you saw I placed um rubber cement around the other one, just to try to like, uh, give it a little bit of a fighting chance. Uh, let's just do a demonstration off the car of, um, what exactly was happening. So you can see, this is what, this is what I did to, uh, I was under, yeah, it was too hard to film, so, so this will help a lot. So this is a wire that we, um, I need to fix. Right, so the process is the same. Kind of, I kind of pinched it a while ago. It's exposed a bit. Let's take your wire strippers. So this has um, you can uh, go over and down like that to fix the length. Or you can keep it uh, free flow. You know, you can choose whatever length you want at this point. But this this limits you. You can like set whatever length you want with that. So I usually keep it in this position. Go like here. Now I can tell you from doing this project with the car, you can you see you just choose go as far as you can in the middle. When you go to the middle, that's how far you're gonna strip. So I don't want to go that much yeah. Okay. So pull that much off. 
do the same on the opposite side. You have to feed it in one way, otherwise it just won't work. Try to go the other way, it doesn't, it won't strip anything. Okay. So with both of those off, I'm going to have to stop recording because I didn't plug the, uh, my iron in. Okay. Solder and iron is not plugged in. So you're going to go like that. You're going to bend a hook on both sides like this. Right? Hook the two together. Right? Then you, nope, sorry, before you do that, almost forgot. <laughs> Take this. This is your shrink wrap, that is. Take your shrink wrap, slide it on first. Like that. We should get one with enough diameter so that way you're not going to be fighting trying to get it on. So you're going to bend that over like that. Hook that together, right? And then you're going to twist them together like this. Okay. So you can solder uh, with a torch like this. Or you can use a soldering gun. I like to use a soldering gun. And uh, this is um, 60-40. A little later. The diameter is 0.8 millimeters, so that's what I use. It melts fast because of its uh, thinness. Right? I have a rag here, so I can just kind of like wipe off the uh, the tip of the um, soldering gun. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I want to tin this. So let's see if it's oops, so wait. You know, what? don't forget your glasses. This. Uh, metal in your eyeball. So I want to tin this first. See, because it's so thin it melts really fast, right? So we're going to go like this. We're going to hold that there, right? We need to get this to wick all the way down and through. heat shrink on. So to do, to do that, we're going to take our little um, mini torch here. It's a butane one. Yeah. Pop the lock off. Pop the forwards. Hit our trigger. Slide those forwards here. That's it. We have a nice tight, watertight connection here. I think we're pretty happy with that. I don't know why I slid it all the way up there, but uh, other than that, we're good. So there you go. That's how you. That's what I was doing underneath the car. Really nice tight watertight and very much a well-connected um, two sets of wires here. So that's what I was doing and uh, the process is pretty straightforward. I hope that uh, this helped. Um, to forget, most important thing I thought about this is uh, make sure you cover all the area around this, the uh, vehicle speed sensor with a um, rag or so because 
when that stuff falls, that hot metal, that's you're done. It just uh, it'll, it'll melt a hose or something. It destroyed my uh, variable speed sensor. I couldn't even put the connector because it dropped down inside a little gap where the connector was. And I was like, oh my god, and I, I just I couldn't get it out, so I broke the pin, so I had to get a new variable speed connector. But that's it. That should take care of your issues. I hope this uh, video helped. Uh, go ahead and uh, give me some feedback if you like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, share it with your friends, and I uh, hope that this was useful. And um, yeah, all right. Thanks again. All the tools will be in links below that I used. Thank you. So at this point, we have two tests that we can do, right? I'm going to show you what I'm doing first. Here's the uh, jack stands. So I got the car jacked up on both sides. So both front wheels are off the ground. You can see under here. Okay. Uh, we're going to do two tests to show you how to uh, diagnose this uh, variable speed sensor. Um, that red piece of red right there you see, that's my beautiful uh, like, uh, final job, covering the harness. Okay, so the back of this has three wires, right? One wire is going to be uh, power from the battery, which is 12 volts. The other one's going to be ground, which is should be the middle one. And the outside one here, closest to the passenger side of America, is going to be your uh, up to 5 volts pulse. So it shouldn't go over five volts, that one there. And that's the one that the uh, uh, the computer uses to give you an idea how fast you're going. Okay, so we're gonna test this with some live data first. So if you have a OBD2, OBD2 connector, this is gonna be pretty easy to tell you if your actual, if your sensor's giving out any information. So on your Honda, OBD2 connect is going to be right here. So that's where we're going to plug in our, uh, our connector, like that. Alright, right, so I got the engine on. I'm connected to the OBD2 connector and I uh, want to just uh, do a little live data. So we're going to go in here. Live. Already selected. I don't know, hard to see. Vehicle speed sensor. So you can see right here. Oops. It's a little blurry. Okay. So I'm put the car into gear. Cars in gear. You can see I'm getting a uh, I'm getting information from the vehicle speed sensor. I'll step on the gas. So you can see there is data being pushed out of the vehicle speed sensor. So we know we have a functional speed sensor. I want to show you if you don't have a um, scan tool, what you can do if you don't have a scan tool with live data, how you can test. Now let's disconnect this uh, vehicle speed sensor here. We're going to test it. Let's see uh, what we have. So let's talk about the wires. So we have three wires, right? Uh, this looks like this blue and white here should be the impulse. And let me tell you right now, this looks different from the wiring diagram. Okay. This black one on the outside here is going to be the ground. This blue and white should be the pulse. And this yellow and black should be the one that gets power. So that should be the 12 volts in the middle on this one. It might be a little different in your car, but if you see a black one, that's going to be brown. That's going to be a ground. And then if you have a blue and white, that's going to probably be most likely the, uh, 
uh, 5 volts. So we're going to check and see if this connector is getting what it needs. So the multimeter is all set into position right here. So the key, there's no key in the ignition, right? So I have to ground it out to the chassis of the body of the car, the, the multimeter. And I have... I'm going to probe the center. Ooh, that center connector. Did I get all nasty already? Hmm. Yeah, it sure did. Interesting. Why did it do that? I just cleaned this. So, uh, something else is going on. Okay. If you can see that, there you go, you can see that. So I'm going to touch this. So you see I have... Have the green green color of death happening on that okay so I've got no voltage on this right center pin no voltage I'm gonna put the key in the on position Actually, I put the key in the position right before you uh, send engine to the send power to the starter. So we should have power here, according to them. There you go. So we have 12.4 volts in the center pin, which is the uh, black and yellow wire. So we know we've got power coming to our uh, to our uh, vehicle speed sensor now. We don't need this ground because I'm grinding to the chassis and we can grind it to the battery. Now this one here is going to be five, well, 6 point, 6 point three volts. Okay, so according to the V, um, it should only be at max five volts. So I'm not sure what, if this is going to be an issue what I'm seeing right here. Because uh, it pulses between zero and five volts to help give you a uh, indication of how fast you're going So as you can tell that's pretty high But I don't know if really that's going to be an issue or not so um, I'm gonna take a little bit of time and clean this off. I don't know why I'm getting corrosion here because I did just clean this But I do notice that this pigtail here is from the original, and it has a uh, looks like it's a like an insulator of some sort, like a black insulator inside of here. It's, uh, like a gasket of some sort. There it is. That's not on the one that I have right now, and I think this might help keep moisture out. So I'm gonna put that in. Let's see how that goes. Into our friend down here. I think that might help keep moisture out. Alright, so what do we know so far? Even though that, uh, that's six volt... Good, good, good. It's kind of like, a uh, high. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm not really sure if, um, I should be concerned, because you can see our live data, live data gave us an actual reading for the, um, speed. So now we're getting output. So anyway. So again, here we go. So we've got ground on the left side here. It's all black wire. The black and yellow is going to be power. We know we know we've got power, and then we have a uh, range of zero to f supposed to be five volts for the vehicle speed sensor on the black and e 
yellow. So we tested all that. We know that we're getting the proper output from here, the pigtail, to the vehicle speed sensor. We're gonna plug this back in, all right? Now we're gonna do the black, I'm sorry, the blue and white should give us a, a um, uh, we're gonna back probe it. And now we're gonna, I'll show you. Okay, so when I say back probe, right, uh, put the sensor here, all right, take a needle. Now we're gonna jam it in behind the, uh, the blue and white. Attach our gonna get an alligator clip, sorry. Okay, so this is to verify the speed sensor is pushing out some sort of like uh, DC pulse voltage of some sort. So what we want to do is uh, take our positive here, attach the alligator clip to that, and then we're gonna take oops. I'll get a clip to here, right. and then we're gonna go ahead and jam, uh, use our alligator clip here and attach it to the back of 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 that, right? Okay, so the car is jacked up. You know that already, right? At the car in neutral, right? I'm gonna turn the wheels manually. There's no engines off. All right, we're gonna see if we get a different uh, voltage, uh, any voltage change happening on the uh, voltmeter. Sorry, I forgot to plug this back in. <laughs> Gosh. All right, let's plug the speed sensor back into the harness. All right, here we go. This should work. Lost my insulin. Oh, there you go. That's a better connection. All right, so it wasn't it wasn't making a good connection. So here we go. We're at 4.68 volts on the uh, the pulse side. That's what the uh, ECU is going to get from the um, vehicle speed sensor. This should work now. That, that makes more sense. Let's turn the wheel and see what happens. There you go. There you go. Nice. So I'm just turning the wheel by hand. It's in neutral and I'm on the passenger side of America. And there you go. So that's how we know for sure you can test the uh, vehicle speed sensor without the um, live data if you don't have it. Okay? All right. So at this point, what do we what do we know? We know that we have a all the power. We have power going to the um, vehicle speed sensor from the battery. So the harness is intact. We know we have a good ground, and we know that we have a good ground because we're getting uh, output back from the actual vehicle speed sensor sensor through the uh, voltage through the uh, black and white. I'm sorry, the the blue and white wire. So the ECU is going to get a pulse, and that's that that circuit will never be completed without um, what do you call it uh, a ground proper ground all the way through the system. So we're good in this department. We know that we have a functional vehicle speed sensor, and we know we have a harness that delivers power and ground to the vehicle speed sensor. So now, what's left? Well, the only thing left is going to be. The cluster. So we're gonna go pull out the dashboard cluster, and I think this is the most common. This is a, this is most likely where the failure is going to be. So let's go take a look and see what we can find. So if you're wondering, here's a, a macro view of the of the setup. We have the multimeter, and that's in um, DC volts set in. And then what we have over here is uh, 
grind it out to the alligator clip right here. Sorry, this alligator clip here is uh, attached to the harness here, so we can get a body harness ha ground. This is this is attached to the uh, to this terminal right here. So this ground is attached to the ground here. Then we have our positive here. Make sure this doesn't touch anything. And that's what's going down into the vehicle speed sensor on the uh, on the back probe. Okay, and that's where we get that information from. So that's how it's set up. You can also attach your ground here right directly to the negative side of the battery. That will also work. Well, let's talk about what was happening. Okay, so this is our vehicle speed sensor right here, and uh, you can see the uh, right here. this power coming in that's what that is and it seems like it goes from two colors it goes black and white something happens here and it goes to black and yellow which is what we saw and that's going to be on one side of the uh, of the vehicle speed sensor in the middle is black ground right and we have blue and white which goes out to the ECM, electronic control module slash PCM. Now, what we know is that our car, even though this is for a 1987 Honda Civic, it doesn't match exactly. It does have three wires, but they're not in the same location. The black wire is on the further side, which is the ground, and the blue and white is actually on one side extreme, and then the, uh, the black and yellow power wires in the middle. So that's what we have for this. Now if we follow the harness, right, we can see that we go blue and white and then we go right down here to the speedometer. So there's a blue and white wire that should go to the speedometer also, which is going to be in the back of this cluster right here, which is that thing right there. So we got to pull that out to see what's going on back there because that's the only thing left where there's a potential like breakage. Okay, so let's pull that apart. Well, let's get this cluster out. Sorry for the sun's in your eye. We're gonna lower the, yeah. Okay, that's as low as it goes, the steering wheel. We have uh, two Phillips. Oops, kinda like in your way. Phillips screws will kind of hold this together. <sighs> okay, there's another one right over here. I'll go on the other side. I don't know if you can see it or not, but yeah. And finish this one off. Awkward. Oh, I feel awkward. Okay. That's one. Okay. Grab the other one from the other side over here. Oh, let's get this cluster out. Sorry for the sun's in your eye. We're gonna lower the yeah. Okay, that's as low as it goes, the steering wheel. better. Right tool for the job. Get the right tool for the job. I have two up top here. 
So one's up here. We got a screw here. And another one over here that's missing. So we're gonna, just gonna pull this one out. Try to pull this cluster out. Yeah, there we go. That's a good sign. Alright, so we got a, got a whole bunch of clips we gotta get out of here. Maybe the screwdriver will help. Let's see, push down. It's kinda like push this off. Come on. There you go. That's one. So just gonna push down. Just gonna work that off. Green clip. And the yellow clip. Alright. Cluster is free. Alright, one of these wires here comes up from the vehicle speed sensor. Right, let's think about this. Let me show you what we have set up here. So I need to figure out what is happening, which wire is, uh, so this blue and white wire right here, right? Can <laughs> you see my needle sticking out? So I stick a needle in here, I jam that positive side onto it. Using my uh, tone generator, I'm gonna try to find that wire, right? And then I ground it out to the body of the car. So I'm ground it out here. And then positively it goes on to the impulse line. This is the line that's going to feed out to the electronic control module and also on the uh, console. So we go on the inside right here and we're going to probe these wires. Let's see which one of those make matches up with what which one of these wires is the exact wire that goes to that part of the harness for the vehicle speed sensor? Okay, so we got our tool. Alright. Awesome tool. Highly recommend it. It's in the on position, nice and loud. It generates a tone when it gets close to the wire. So, what we do, right, we can just go like this. Okay. Alright, so we're. Uh, I guess you can see a better shot. Here you go. Go from this part of the harness to there to here. Alright, so we know we're somewhere over here. Alright, it's a dead giveaway. So it's one of these wires, right? So it's kind of. We need to fan them out a little bit. So, it's obvious that this here, this blue and white one here, is, is the one we're looking for. Which matches the blue and white on the harness itself. So, it's the blue and white wire with the line. Double check. Isolate it. Okay, so that is the money shot right there. Give you a little better shot. So take again, take our tool. That's how we know. That is the prize possession right there. So that wire here, that goes into this pin right here. All right, so. Okay, so. Looks like we've got a connection all the way to there. So that's the big harness. All right, uh, let's show you one more time. Okay, it's that one right there. Yeah, sorry, that, I need a pointer. There you go. It's that right there. Well, that's gonna be our prized possession. 
and that's the blue and white wire which is matches up with the harness set so we know that it's working all the way to here we have no issues with that um so yeah looks like our problem is going to be in our cluster so what does that mean i don't know this is the orientation if you're looking at the cluster that that's this connector here at the top right we need to go uh, six over one two three four five six right, so here right if we look at the hmm, I don't know if you can see it or not but right in here one two three four five six is what we have these two are not in use so we don't have any witness marks so we know that uh, that is correct so we're going to count over. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth line right here. So we follow that line down. And it goes to right here. Whatever's holding this in right here and giving this information right here, that is what this provides voltage for. So we got to see what's on the other side of this. Alright, so let's... Let's kind of pull this apart. Right, pull the front off, I mean, anyway. So how do we do this? Heavy tab tab. There's going to be a lot of, a lot of tabs there. Okay, so... Alright. Okay, that, that, and that. And then we have another tab over here. So you can to press them all at the same time. Okay. That'll be fun. So let's see, can, what can we do? Alright, we got that off. That off. Yeah. All of those are off. Right, so. bon, bon, bon. Okay. This had to come off anyway because we gotta try to get that out. If this works out well, we gotta get that out. Um, all this here, back on the right side of things. Go. Okay, so we need to get behind that, right? So, looks like. Alright, so, so we don't break anything. I'm gonna take this. How's this disconnect or not? So these are LED lights, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't know what to do. Yeah, it doesn't screw. Okay. So I'll pop that out. Pop that out. Pop that out. And pop. This up. Yep. Okay. So that's good to know. Let's see this. Get this off. See the problem? So you gotta have like seven hands. Looking good. Looking good. Yeah. So I gotta be careful because I'm not really sure. It's kind of like wires. What connectors back here? Okay. Alright, that's all. There's another soft wire. We need that out, right? So we're gonna do that easily. We don't screw those. That's not true. Make sure all not the same, all the same size. I mean, sorry. We got a special happen with any of It's the first good. Okay, here we go. This is coming out. All right. So, oh boy. <laughs> oh man. Uh, never gets easy, does it? So, in a perfect world, I think you can probably just like, if you don't want to go any deeper, just buy this. 
this I sourced it at uh, I believe it's a hundred and Honda parts now have it for like hundred and ninety dollars or hundred eighty six dollars and I think you can get it from the uh, Honda dealership for like two ninety or something like that so I don't know if that helps you find anything but I'll I'll try to put the part number up for you all right we're going deeper so now's a good time to talk about what we know, right? We know that this right here is directly attached to the vehicle speed sensor. That is this right here. So whatever voltage this provides right here is what gives us that output. Okay, interesting. So each one of these screws come in for something different. Looks like we have I bet you this bottom one right here might be see right here. I don't know, I'm not sure what that comes in for, what that feeds, but either way, it does get some sort of input from somewhere. I would have to look at the electrical diagram some more to figure this out. Well anyway, something is not working right here. Now if when I look at it I can't see any like obvious damage and my uh, next best clue is to think about uh, maybe getting it to so we can see if, we see if it can be reflowed. I don't know, soldered maybe? We can do a little soldering. See what the heck we get. Yeah, maybe. All right, we'll have to think about it for a second. So this is where like component level repair is like super important to understand and to invest time in knowing, you know? It helps you understand what the heck is going on here. You know, what you see, like, well, like what's a capacitor, you know? What are the various components, you know, diodes, things that control the flow of electricity? Well, either way, right? This is what we do now, right? I know that from my failure is intermittent, so it feels as if this should probably still be functional, the speed sensor, but I don't know, you know, not really sure. Now, here's a here's a here's my most obvious point of failure. Could that be a loose connection right here? As in like, is it not touching that all the time? I don't know how I can easily test that because this harness connects into there and then that comes down to here and gives that voltage. That voltage goes into the back of this board here, which by the way, took a little bit of time, but you just kind of like to, to separate this, you just kind of like pull on it like that. And it just comes right off. Okay. So, here's our board, right? That needs to be replaced, I mean, uh, fixed, I think. So, what do we have here? We have one, two, three, four. Here's a ground. Oh, two, uh, oh, uh, I'm trying to actually see if you can see it. We know that's a ground pin. Up here it says ground. Hmm. Now I don't see any of these components like look they don't look messed up. You know, I don't see anything like you know, is is that swollen? Is that supposed to be that way? Does that look right? I don't know. These these look like Capacitors, maybe? Alright, yeah. Those look fine. So, a couple of things can happen here, right? We can probably just take this and try to re solder those there. Since, since that, since this, that gives this input right here to adjust this motor. Voltage-wise, you know what? Maybe we can just do like a like a test on this 
motor right here? What do you think? I don't know. Well, well let me think about it. And that way we'll know for sure if this is actually functional. All right, so it took a little bit of time putzing around with this, figuring things out. I wanna show you something here. Okay, the back of this board, right? Kind of like gives you a little bit of an indicator of what's happening here. So initially I thought these side, this side here, it says, it's a little hard to see, but it has positive and negative, positive and negative, right? And I thought about it for a little bit. I put some power, nine volts to each of those, to the back of that, to see what would happen, right? I got nothing. And then I uh, went over here to this side. You can see we have a uh, sine negative, sine positive, cosine negative, cosine positive. Now, I don't know how that fully relates to the actual output, but I know that this looks like that would be the one that controls the motor of the speedometer, right? So, if you know a better way to, say, jam something back there, help me test this, go ahead and get it for me. I'm telling you, I struggled for a while just to set this up so you can see. So my nine volt battery is approximately 9.23 volts. Watch what happens when I connect this. So it looks like at, that's like 45 miles per hour, 9.3 volts. So that's how that works, right? So what do we know? We know for sure, right, that this motor is fine. There's no issues with the motor itself. And that's a good sign. So this cluster is good. Um, I'll take this off so you can see what's happening back here. All right, that's what's going on. So this here is uh, top one's negative, the green wire, and then this uh, the paper clip is gonna went to uh, positive. So that should help you set it up so you can test it yourself and that all that does is controls this motor right here this motor is what it's getting energized and that gives me the output on the speedometer so we know that the speedometer itself is fine so i can tell you that nothing looks weird here inside of the, these connectors yeah everything looks pretty pretty golden and then the so I know some of you are just as inquisitive as I am I wanted to know what the other two do up top you can see right there so what we have is uh, positive at the top negative is going to be the green so positive is the is the um, paper clip and it does the same thing it moves the it moves the but it does it um, considerably more um, aggressively and a lot further. I'm sure to you. So, put my positive to my green. See that? So it goes a little further. I'm I'm guessing that because of where it went to, it must uh, take over. I think the the way it's programmed is because we, when we did the uh, the bottom to the two signs, I'm assuming that means sign to S I N anyway in math. It only went to like seventy something, and then this goes. This must take over. Maybe when it gets a little higher. So, I don't know. That's my assumption on it. Uh, it could be wrong, of course. <laughs> it's just, I'm sure there'll be no shortage of people telling me I'm wrong. Either way, we know that the actual cluster itself works fine. Um, and that cluster, I meant the uh, speedometer works fine when fed power directly to it. Now, I don't really know for sure what. I look at this, I don't really see any issues, you know, but I do want to talk about it with you. So let me get set up a little better. 
the these four pin okay uh, this is so interesting so the power or well, the voltage comes in the zero to five voltage comes in right here it screws into this from the back okay. which is uh, that right there now this here part of the circuit board stops right here and it stops right there right now if you put your multimeter in continuity mode right like that touch them and test them all right so you can see can you see yeah there you go Let's see, I have continuity, right? Now, between the, there's no, let's see, so if between here and here, right, I have continuity. In here, I have continuity. That would be where the screw touches and touch down to give us voltage, right? So if we go into there, touch here, we still have continuity. So there's no breakage in continuity um, across where the fuse, um, sorry, where the wire comes in and gives us like that range of voltage. And uh, it seems as if you look at the back of the board, right? I'm gonna take a photo of this so you can get a better sh understanding because it's too hard to, my camera has limitations. But that's as far as that goes, right there. So let's flip it over and see what's happening on the uh, on the front of the board. Okay, so it looks like the pins, yep, soldered, soldered, and it goes to like right there. Okay, so the first thing, okay, so it's soldered here, soldered here, right? And then it goes to here. It touches this, uh, it's not a diode. These are diodes. I'm not sure what that is. And a capacitor, maybe? I don't know. But it's where it says D3, right? So I should have continuity right, between. Can you see? All right, good. Get that out of your way. I should have continuity from anywhere here to right here. So, and I'm wrong, okay. Okay. I do on this side, sorry. Sorry, sorry. On this side I do. So this looks like this controls flow of electricity of some sort. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, maybe it is a uh, a diode. No. Hmm. Let's flip back over. Let's see what's happening over here. What is this? That goes to here. Uh, it's just hard to kind of keep track of it in your head. So that goes, we know that that is this, and then this, uh, rats, the hair to here. We know we have continuity to there. Okay. And then from there, that bridges a gap over to here. Hmm. Right, so, so these two points here. So this and this. Okay. 
make sure, switch it around, let's see. Are there changes? Oh, that changes. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Um, okay, and then it goes all the way up to the, these two here. These two uh, resistors. I wonder if uh, the R5s and R6 means resistors and then uh, the D3 is like diode. Maybe that's what that means, you know? I don't know. Because this looks like a resistor to me because of those bands, but it doesn't have an R next to it as a C. Well, well, well. Let's just check. So, we know. Sorry, am I right or wrong here? I think I just got lost, didn't I? So I go from here. Now, this is not a good way to test component level stuff because what happens is, uh, okay. You really need an oscilloscope. Okay, I'm following it right. Okay, that's seven point something. Seven point zero four resistance I'm getting in between these two components here. Now here's the thing. I am unsure if the if it's operating correctly on it because I don't have any um known values to compare it against. And also um any processing that happens will be in these two chips. I don't know what they do. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's like, it just, uh, without information on the board, I'm kind of like, I'm just kind of like guessing. Uh, like I said, I can run around and check continuity and resistance all I want. Um, but it doesn't reveal anything obvious to me, you know, at the moment. So... I'm still wondering now if the failure is just uh, like the connection on on the on the um the back of the uh console, you know. That's that's really what I have left. I'm going to go see if uh I want to do something a little bit more conclusive. The old shake wiggle test, you know. Yeah, let's do that. If you're wondering, this is What's printed on this is 071671. That's what's at the bottom right here. And then we have um, 010. I'm unsure what that refers to, those numbers, but if you probably wanted to just buy one of these, that's probably what you want to do. If you, I mean, I'm sorry, that's, what, that's what's probably available. All right, so we're gonna use our multimeter and do a voltage test to see what's happening on the inside on that connector there. All right, so that's connected to the ground. I'm going to throw an alligator clip on that bolt right there. All right, that's wire is, uh, that's this right here, negative side. And then we're gonna probe this uh, wire right here, this white and blue wire it's the six slot over so you gotta count one two three four five six and we're gonna see what the voltage is on that and if that fluctuates or not it keys in the on position right before you crank it right we got our multimeter and uh, volts set in um, I don't know how this is gonna work <laughs> ah. trying to give you the best shot possible here. Parsha. Rehearse this. Right. Is that gonna work for you? Hmm. I don't know. Let's see. Okay, so positive probe, six position over. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Remember we have the two blank blank uh, spots there. So 
One, two, three, four, five, six, six. There we go. So we're at 4.57 volts. So that makes sense, right? Uh, I wonder what happens if we turn the key completely off. This this should be completely empty. It shouldn't have any voltage coming out of it. So let's just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six. See if my theory is right. Yeah, there you go. See, so I'm gonna hold it there. Put the key in the on position. And there we go. Now we have voltage to it. So key in the off position. No voltage. Key in the on position. Now we have voltage. Okay, so we know for sure everything is uh, it's a solid 4.5 volts, right? Shaking the harness. I'm not seeing any changes. You know what I mean? So uh, there's nothing loose is what I'm saying. So my best get, I guess right now, right? After we just clean this harness before we try to do anything in that too complex. I th think we should try to like uh, reconnect the console just right here. You know what, actually, here, well, let's do another test. Um, here, I want you, I want to show you uh, how this behaves in relationship to, uh, I'm going to put the, the car is jacked up. And, uh, I want you to see how the voltage behaves with, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. How it relates to speed. Okay, so it's a neutral now. I'm gonna put it in first. So I'm in first. See, I'm speeding up. Oops, second. Now I'm in neutral. Turned it off. Alright, key in the on position right before you crank it over. Point three one volts. Let's turn it back on. Three one volts. Put it in first. Two point three, two point four five. Okay. So what I'm gathering from this is like it looks like it holds on to a charge. Okay, it's at 4.3, okay, 4.3, okay, right. As soon as I go to first gear, so I'm probably like spinning at like 10, 12 miles per hour, 10 or 12, I'm at 2.58 volts. All right, so, how are you doing? All right, so what do we got? We got a... Uh, Point three. Voltage drops. Get back in neutral. Okay, so we get an idea how it works. Right? Neutral is going to always be a point three volts. Put it in first gear. It's probably like around 10 or, f 10 or 15 miles per hour. Or it looks like we're like somewhere around two point. Six volts, stepping on the gas. Two point four volts, back to neutral. Neutral seems to be about. about point three, so it stabilizes at point three. Hmm. You notice it jumped a bit, really high. I'm not sure why. I should have just been low, low, low. Mm-hmm. Okay. Back into first. Two point. Second gear. Neutral. Two 
is at 4.58. So, that right there looks so strange to me, right? Because if the range is 0 to 5 volts, and we're getting 4.58 in neutral right now. Hmm. Anyway, that doesn't look right to me, but we can move forward and see what other things we get. If anything, anything else helps us, like... Uh, give us a more con concrete idea what's going on. I think this is where you'd want to kind of like graph outputs. You want to match your speed, you know, like on a, um, if you had a, like a just a regular graph, you would put your speed on your x-axis and your y would be your, your, uh, your voltage axis. So, all right, cool. Pull that off. We'll put this back together and see what we get. All right, so that's a bit of a fail. All I have is a, tachometer that works. That's it. Fuel gauge works. I'm sure the temperature still works. Because again, this is our failure point. At this point... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. The only thing I can say is that one electronic part has failed in the back that controls the uh, speedometer. Which part of it failed? I don't know. I want to go a little deeper, but I, I'm hitting some technical limitations. All right, you know what we can do? The, we can throw the parts cannon at it. So I can try to now see if uh, I can find a, uh, the equivalent part of the junk area. See, let's see what the. Just out of curiosity, see if, see if it'll actually work. Yeah, that's what we'll do. I forgot to mention, it says I'm gonna do the uh, wiggle test. So, there you go. Wiggle, wiggle. That's nice. Thinking that maybe the connection up top here was loose. Uh, mm hmm. Yep. That's about right. Yeah, that's that is a. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. All right. Fair enough. back at the homestead. So we have choices here. What do you think we should do? We have the less mileage Honda Civic, sorry, less mileage than mine. Or we can take the one that was closer to my mileage, it was newer, newer car. Hmm. Choices, choices. I don't know, let's do the less mileage one, see how that one runs. That's the moment we've been waiting for. Now, this is with the newer control board from the, uh, the newer car with the less mileage, sorry, less mileage. Let's see how this works. Yes. I say that's a win. What do you think? I think that's absolutely a win. Wow. Okay, so. Second gear. Third gear. Alright. So it's a little out of alignment with the uh, voltage that means in regards to the speed. There's no way I was doing 60 miles per hour. I mean, I doubt it. It's possible. Well, anyway, I'll double check. 
Wow, so, yeah, let me turn this off and we can chat. So, let's talk about what we just did. I, I took you through the entire diagnostic process of, uh, of trying to get this vehicle speed sensor working. And it was, um, you know, it's it, it, it took me about a couple a couple of couple of days right but it should take you no more than one day because you can see all the stuff challenges I went through to try to figure this out now here's the thing in a perfect world right if we really want to get really good like much better at this stuff we want to be able to, to, to get down to the component level and repair it there that's my goal right so I'm gonna hold on to this bad um, vehicle speed sensor um, control board back there and then uh, we're gonna try to uh, when my skill sets get better and a uh, component level repair I'll revisit this and see if we can actually diagnose this thing and see which component failed or not we have uh, one extra um, board to, to play around with so we can maybe say like okay maybe this one might be a better one that works better and we can test it from there but that'd be like somewhere down the line if everything goes well I'm healthy I'm still alive we'll, uh, we'll, we'll we will revisit this so anyway if you saw if this was good to you this video was good for you it helped you diagnose your problem please subscribe it's so important these things take a lot of time to produce and a lot of time and a lot of money and uh, it helps me a lot because uh, the subscription is really essential so you know please help help me out if you can go ahead and subscribe and uh, if it was useful to you let others know about it and I uh, hope that it uh, hope that it helped you out because I know it was a good fun journey for me to like art to document and share with others all right thanks again I'll do a follow-up video on this if it fails or in a couple months or so. All right, you are the best. Thanks, everybody. What the hell is she wearing? Look at her shoes. What the heck is that? Man, people, society, modern society, does weird stuff. The new, the new automobile with the, with the more mileage. Yeah, is that right? I don't know. No, we actually went with the less mileage, older car. So, and we have the other one, the newer one, to also uh, work with when, when when things go south with this one. 
hopefully I don't, it won't do anytime soon. But either way, um... could fix the component you can actually feature proof yourself versus just like hustle and replace it like the one big piece you know so that's why component level repair is so important especially if you want to take your skill level to a whole other level you know it's about making money these are the types of skills that you want to like develop you know so anyway I did see a nice Honda there, and I'll grab some other parts off of it. So it's, uh, it's the interior that really good. I need some, I need some stuff. Uh, try to get this thing as restocked as possible. You know what I mean? Anyway, hey, thanks for hanging out, and uh, again, I hope this helps. And uh, I'll see you next video.